I will now go into basically, since this is a pharmaceutical pharmacy presentation, the prescription pharmacological aspects. I can have the next slide. So these are, you know, kind of the biggest group of drugs out there or you know modulators of the three main neurotransmitters in the brain and I'll briefly discuss some of them. So your main uh, medication, you know, you go see a psychiatrist, a doctor, emergency room, they, they start you off on an SSRI, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Basically, at the synapse, when um, serotonin is excreted, sites are blocked, which prevent reabsorption at the presynaptic end of the neuron, and that causes more serotonin to flow freely between the synapses, which causes more serotonin to be available. So, you know, you have your oldest, perhaps most quoted in the media medication like Prozac, um, and then you have your more specific, uh, like fluvoxamine, which targets, um, you know, more serotonin as opposed to Prozac, for example, which also touches on norepinephrine receptors and can cause different side effects because of that. A problem with SSRIs is that they cause sexual dysfunction, which is one of the number one reasons people actually drop therapy or stop taking their medication. However, they are the best tolerated. They have a really good side effect profile. Um, you know, very rarely can you overdose on them. So from that standpoint, this is why they're the number one choice uh, when we go to get um, prescribed. And in general, they cause less excitability. They're more anti-anxiety as well. And they cause the person to be more drowsy. We go to the next slide. Then you have, very similarly, um, SNRIs, selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Basically, same mechanism as an SSRI. However, norepinephrine uptake is also uh, inhibited. And you have, for example, medications like the Fexor, the vaccine. The problem with these is um, that they cause increased heart rate because of the norepinephrine reuptake. Adrenaline stimulates, you get higher blood pressure, increased heart rate, and um, they might cause more anxiety than a traditional SSRI, which is why, um, you know, they might not be the first line of defense against depression. However, they're very effective for people who have the kind of depression that causes them to be tired, drowsy all the time, um, and kind of not want to do anything. Next. The neurogenetic specific serotonin antidepressants, called NASAs, they basically increase serotonin and noradrenaline, causing the same side effects um, causing the same actions but not side effects as the reuptake inhibitors because they don't actually prevent reuptake. What they do is they cause more to be produced. Um, this is why, for example, a person who is suffering from sexual dysfunction, let's say, on an SSRI might try mirtazapine because it has a very uh, much lower side effect profile in that case. Um, as you know, it doesn't directly, it's not directly considered an SSRI. Okay. Then you have your straight norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. These medications increase the level of norepinephrine. Um, side effects include anxiety, increased heart rate. You know, it's, it's as if you drank too much coffee, had too much caffeine. So that is a problem but it really helps people who have um, that kind of low depression state where they're just in the house all day, not moving. So we go on to the next. Next slide. You have your norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitors. This is a newer class of drugs which not only stimulates norepinephrine but stimulate dopamine as well. And it's been found to work in a lot of cases, especially with um, people who don't want to experience 
you know, the side effects of SSRIs. And however, the problem is, is that these medications can increase anxiety, you know. So you kind of you feel like happy, yeah, I'm gonna go, you know, do stuff, but you're also kind of on the edge. So if someone's anxiety prone, it might not be the best pharmacological option for them. Next slide. Then you have your tricyclic antidepressants. These are a very, they're the older class of antidepressants. However, they are effective against depression. And, you know, they cause a lot more side effects than, for example, SSRIs and can be potentially more dangerous. However, they're still used because uh, SSRIs, they cause a lot of increased agitation in some people, which, um, Tricyclic antidepressants are known to cause less of. That's why these medications are still in use, they're still prescribed. And you know, if someone's not responding well to an SSRI, they are a go-to option. Finally, you have your MAOIs, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Monoamine oxidase is an enzyme that basically degrades dopamine and serotonin. And by blocking its actions, you obviously are able to have more of these available. And these are really old. They were effective, are effective against depression. However, they're very dangerous because they interact with a lot of broad host of medications. Not only that, they interact with common foods, such as grapefruit juice even, drinks. Uh, so the person has to be monitored very strictly, but in cases of a teenager or a child, it's almost impossible. And you know, they have to file a strict diet because if they don't, they could actually cause fatal interactions. You know, not just something where you go to the hospital and you know, you just, you can literally cause, you know, heart attacks right on the spot um, if not treated really fast. So that's those. And if you go to the next slide. Finally, there are, you know, augmented drugs. These are drugs that are added to a course of depression, such as if you're on an SSRI and you still feel down and it's still not working, you might want to add um, an antipsychotic. This, is, this has been a recently approved um, form of treatment because low levels of antipsychotics can actually decrease dopamine, such as in the case of Abilify, you would give two to maybe five milligrams of Abilify versus the 15 milligrams necessary to treat you know, psychosis and it is known to help people with depression. Benzodiazepines um, decrease anxiety. You know, you decrease anxiety and you're less stressed, less stressed, you know, you might not be as depressed. So these are drugs that are added that might help an antidepressant, common antidepressant work. Next slide, please. And finally, you have a table of the most prescribed uh, as of 2010, the most prescribed medications. And it is, you know, not a coincidence that the first four SSRIs, they're the most commonly prescribed. Um, Prozac's been around for quite some time, but it's still good, it's still going strong. And, um, you know, the others are a little more specific. Lexapro, uh, escitalopram, escitalopram, it's an antiomer. They actually, you know, um, are a newer class, kind of called the Hollywood drugs. Um, but really, in my opinion, it's just price gouging by company statement and effective the same thing. And uh, this gives me you know, a distribution of kind of what was given out. And these are our references. If there are any questions, I will do my best to answer them. However, I'm very young in the pharmacy program, so. Thank you.